Advanced Functions 1.4, Sketching Graphs of Functions. Okay, so this is just a big review of what you did in grade 11 all semester. So you should be really good at this. I'm not going to waste a lot of time on it, but I will go over probably the most difficult um, types of questions that you could possibly do, and I'm sure you will be able to handle the rest of it no problem. So this is a general form for all the possible transformations that you can do to a function. Now, I'm sure you remember that A means vertical stretch, K is a horizontal, well, it could be stretch or compression, depending on the value. I don't need to go over that for you, do I? K is horizontal stretch or compression, D is horizontal shift, and C is vertical shift. So, they really emphasize in the textbook that the order is important. Now, I tend to disagree. Well, not that it isn't important, but that you will do it automatically by just writing out a mapping rule. Because the order of operations says that you must do multiplication before you do addition and subtraction. So here's these A and K values are multiplying, right? Vertical stretch or horizontal stretch or compressions. And these are adding and subtracting things. So when you write out your mapping rule, which would be x divided by k plus d, a times y plus c. There you go. You're doing it in the proper order. Now, the order is only important if the teacher asks you to write every step, like do the transformations one at a time, which would be a total waste of your time. And you can even tell her I said so, if, if, or he, if they insist that you do it that way. Sure, by this point, you understand that you need to multiply before you add and subtract. No big deal. So let's just get on to the deal here and do the mapping rule. So here's your basic mapping rule where you're going to apply these coefficients here. We're going to apply it to some function, right? Some function. I'll do a complete one down here in a minute. So let's go over here for a minute. This is one of the questions from um, the textbook. And they give you the coordinates of a point 1a. 1, 8, and they say, what would be the coordinates if you applied this transformation? Now remember the transformation can be applied to any parent function. It can even be applied to a series of points, as you probably recall from grade 11. So we're saying, I want to transform this point 1, 8 using this transformation. So right away, I can tell you that x and y are going to be transformed by doing the following. What do I do to the axis? Remember, the axes are inside the bracket and they go opposite to what you think. It says minus 2. No, we're going to add 2 to the x. And the y value, there's a 3 out front. That means multiplication. There is no vertical shift up or down. So I just have three y's. So that means that the point 1, 8 is going to become 1 plus 2, which is going to be 3. And I'm going to multiply the y by 3. So 3 times 8 is 24. Isn't that easy? Sure it is. You remember how to do this, I'm sure. So the next one, uh, minus 2, f negative x minus 7. Okay, so we have two reflections going on here, right? These negatives mean reflections. A reflection about the, if it's in front for the y, that means top to bottom. So about the x-axis. And for the x's, we're going this way, right? So that's about the y-axis. It doesn't really matter unless you've been asked to explain what the transformations are. You know that we would take x and y, and our transformation would be negative x and negative 2 y's minus 7. y's are always very straightforward. Okay, so the point 1, 8 is going to become negative 1. And the 8, I'm going to multiply it by negative 2. That's minus 16. Minus 7 is minus 23. And there you go. And the last one here, now we've got all kinds of things going on. That's about as many things as you can possibly do, except there's no reflections in there. So let's take a look at the mapping rule. x, y. Um, 0.5, that's a half. So if dividing by a half means multiplying by 2 right? By 1 divided by half is 2. So I have 1, I divide it in half. I have two parts. So that's why we're dividing. 1 divided by half, you invert and multiply the fraction. So that's going to give me two x's, and then I 
subtract 3. And this one's straightforward, don't change it. So this is 0.5y plus 3. And there's my new coordinates. So I plug in 1 and 8 now, and I get 2 times 1 is 2, minus 3 is minus 1. And 0 0.5, a half of 8 is 4, plus 3 is 7. Okay, so that's pretty much what this section is about. The last one we're going to do, though, is probably the hardest question. They give you uh, y equals 2 to the x here. And let me just see what they're asking here. They ask you to uh, graph the parent function and the transformed function. So these are the transformations that we're going to apply to 2 to the x. They want you to give the uh, equation of the transformed function. They want you to give the impact of the transformations on the domain range, intervals of increase, decrease, and end behaviors. Ooh, all that. Okay, so let's take it one at a time. So first we're going to make a table of values for 2 to the x. 2 to the x. So we'll go from minus 2 to positive 2. So 2 to the minus 2 is 2 squared, 1 over it, that's a quarter. 2 to the minus 1 is a half, 2 to the 0 is 1, 2, 4. Okay, so now we have five points that we can transform using this. Can you give me the equation of the transform function? Let's do that first. I don't know. I, th I would have asked for that first. So y equals, so our f at x here is 2 to the x. So this and this this go outside. So I have minus 2 and then I have 2 to the x. Here's what the x value is. So I have 3x minus 1, close the bracket, plus 4. There you go. So remember the y's are out front. The function is 2 to the x. So if this was 3 to the x, I'd have a 3 here. Um, some people want to multiply these up. That's a very bad thing to do. It's nothing, it's, this is your parent function. Okay, so what's the mapping rule? X, Y, go to, what do I do to my X's? Well, I divide them by 3 and I add 1. Opposite, right? Divide, add. What do I do to the Y's? Minus 2Y plus 4. Okay, so there's my mapping rule. And if I want to graph this function now, I'm going to use these coordinates, so I'm going to do minus 2 and 1 quarter, I'm going to do minus 1 and a half, 0 and 1, and 1 and 2, and 2 and 4. And I'm going to apply the transformation. So minus 2 thirds plus 3 thirds would be 1 third, and a quarter times minus 2 is going to really test my math skills here. So that's minus a half plus 4. That gives me 3 and a half. And minus 1, that's minus a third plus 3 thirds would be 2 thirds. And a half times minus 2 is minus 1 plus 4 is 3. Um, 0 divided by 3 is 0 plus 1 is 1. And minus 2 plus 4 is 2. I like 0 and 1, don't you? And 1 and 2, that's 1 third plus 1, that would be 4 thirds. And minus 4 plus 4 is 0. And finally, 2 thirds plus 1 is 5 thirds. And minus 8 plus 4 is minus 4. Okay, so now we're going to graph it quickly. I want this lesson to go on too long for you. You can always fast forward for this part while I'm sketching it if you want to. Don't forget to subscribe, right? Make sure you're on subscription so you get the lessons as they come online. Okay, so here we go. We're going to do minus 1, minus 2, and let's say that's a quarter. So that's a quarter, that's a half, that's minus 1, it's going to be about here. 1, 2, 3, oh, I'll stretch it up here, 4. Okay, so maybe I'll move that down just a touch here. Okay, so I have minus two and a quarter, minus one and a half, zero and one, one and two and two and four. So here's my parent function. Oops, like that, not bad. Okay, so where's my transform function now? So I had a reflection, right? So it means it's gonna be going upside down. 
we hope. I'll say, so I have one third and three and a half. One third, about there. One, two, three and a half. And I have two thirds and three. And I have one and two, that's the same point here. And I have four thirds and zero. And I have five thirds, which is one and two thirds, and minus four. And that's kind of a weird graph, isn't it? So it's going down, it's going down like this. So I flipped it, it should be coming down like that. It should be going like this, right? Okay, so here's my graph. Now, how did this affect the impact of the transformations on the domain and range? Well, the domain of the original function is x is an element of real numbers, right? So that, that's not going to change just because I flipped it over. So I'm going to put 1 and 2 are the same. Domain is the same. Um, the range. Range. Okay, so for the first one, first graph, for the first graph, the range is going to be uh, y is greater than zero. Y is an element of real numbers because we're starting on the x-axis and going up. And this one, we have an asymptote up here. Our asymptote is now plus four. So one, two, three, four. We have an asymptote right across here like this. So in this case, that means the range is going to be y is less than 4, y is an element of real numbers. So when I say 2 here, 2 is going to be the transformed function. So that's the domain, the range, intervals of increase and decrease. Intervals, so on our first graph, it's continually increasing. Right? It's increasing. Remember, you're going from left to right, so increases... So I'm going to write increasing between, now remember the intervals we're going to use round brackets because it's going to be negative infinity to infinity. It's increasing for all values of x. Or you could say increasing for x is an element of real numbers. And the second graph, we're almost done here, the second graph is going to be decreasing for all values of x. See, as I come from this side and I go down, it's always decreasing. So that's your first graph is always increasing. The second graph is decreasing for x is an element of real numbers. Or if you use interval notation, you would say negative infinity to infinity, round brackets, because we don't include infinity. And the final thing was to state the equation of the transform function, which we've already done right here. Right, uh, not there, this one right here. And that's it for today. Hope you have a good day and understand everything I said to you. If you have any questions, please leave them below. Bye.